very pleased to be here today to moderate a discussion with members of our specialized heart failure team on the topic of congestive heart failure. I'm a board certified doctoral prepared nurse practitioner and have worked as a nurse practitioner in cardiology for the last 23 years with the Heart Center in Poughkeepsie, New York. We have a comprehensive multidisciplinary inpatient and outpatient heart, va heart failure program with New Vance Health, the Heart Center, and I serve as the outpatient heart failure program coordinator. It is Heart Month and Heart Failure Awareness Week is February 6th to February 10th. Heart Failure Awareness Week serves as a nationwide campaign to help bring attention and educate about the risk factors, signs and symptoms of heart failure, and we are so glad to bring this information to you today. To briefly start, what is heart failure and what is this not? Heart failure is actually very common, and right now six and a half million Americans over the age of 20 have heart failure. Heart failure is a condition in which the heart loses its ability to pump enough blood to supply the body's needs. While the term heart failure might sound scary or imply that the heart is about to stop or is no longer working, that is usually not the case. What heart failure does mean is that it is failing to keep up with the demands of the body. There are many possible reasons for this, and depending on the reasons, there is so much we can do. With both medical and surgical options to help improve this condition and to help people live a long and fulfilling life. The theme for Heart Failure Awareness Week in 2023 is heart success, function, not failure. And today we will shed light on what heart failure looks like and all that can be done to treat heart failure based on how the patient's heart is functioning. As we have this conversation, be certain to remember everyone's journey with heart failure is different. I'm pleased now to introduce and to have part of this discussion, heart failure experts, Dr. James Lyons. He is the heart failure system medical director for New Vance Health and is heart failure program director at the Heart Center. And Laurel Kemp, she is a board certified nurse practitioner and our inpatient congestive heart failure program coordinator for New Vance Health, the Heart Center at Vassar Brothers Medical Center. She has been an NP for 10 years and has specialized in cardiac care for eight and most recently has narrowed her focus to hospitalized patients with heart failure. So let's start the conversation. We know that early detection and evidence-based treatment of heart failure will allow one to continue an active lifestyle for a longer period of time while reducing the risk for hospitalization. And Laurel, I'm gonna start with you. As it relates to early detection, can you tell us, are there certain risk factors for heart failure? Uh, thank you for that introduction, Stephanie. Yes, absolutely. So there are, you know, heart failure is not something that typically happens overnight. It is usually a slow and uh, gradual process over time. There are um, several other disease states and other uh, factors that can increase your risk for having heart failure. Some of those include uh, coronary artery disease or blockage in the heart arteries that supply the heart muscle. Along those same lines, a heart attack can put you at, at increased risk for heart failure. Um, other things like high blood pressure or diabetes, um, even some thyroid disorders can put you at high risk for um, having heart failure as well. Um, when the heart valves are involved uh, or have a problem or an infection on the heart valves, that can also put you at uh, increased risk for heart failure. Um, and things like drug abuse and alcohol can also increase your risk for heart failure. So if I have any of those risk factors, how do I know if I have heart failure? What are the signs and symptoms of heart failure? So the signs and symptoms of heart failure can be sometimes vague, um, but also varied, and they don't always necessarily um, happen every day. It's something that can come and go depending on whether you are having what we would call an exacerbation of heart failure. But some things to be on the lookout for would be shortness of breath with uh, physical activity, or sometimes even when laying down flat, you can get short of breath. Um, sometimes you can even wake up from sleep feeling like you can't catch your breath. Um, uh, weight gain, uh, suddenly, uh, something, you know, that would, be, would indicate that you're retaining water is if you have a sudden weight gain. Um, and along those lines as well, there could be swelling in your feet or your ankles or your legs. You may have some abdominal discomfort, things like nausea or feeling full, um, or bloated. And there can also be sort of a generalized fatigue or weakness, um, that, uh, you may feel as well. And I, I know we do a lot of diagnostic testing to diagnose heart failure. What are some of the tests that we use to see if actually someone based on those symptoms actually has heart failure or if it's maybe from something else? 
There are a couple of different tests that we can use um, as providers to help diagnose heart failure. The most common would be an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. This is a non-invasive um, uh, test that we can do where um, uh, an ultrasonographer puts you know, jelly on, on the person's chest and they use a probe to take a look at the heart function, as well as to examine whether those heart valves are working well. Um, sometimes patients can also go undergo um, stress testing. Um, there's a couple of different types of stress tests that uh, a, a provider can order. Some of those involve exercising. Some of those also require a medication um, during the testing. Cardiac catheterization, which is where we would directly visualize the um, uh, blood vessels that supply the heart muscle, or also potentially a special um, uh, catheter can be used to measure the pressures within the heart and get a better sense of how well or efficiently the heart is uh, functioning. And sometimes we use um, CAT scan or MRI or other nuclear tests in special cases to see if there may be a potential other underlying cause of the heart failure that would require specialized treatment. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks, Laurel. Well, you can see there are certainly many symptoms one can have, and there's several diagnostic tests, as you mentioned, that are often needed to figure out if someone has heart failure. Most importantly, I think we wanna determine the cause. And once we know the cause, it's gonna help us determine what course of care and treatment um, for the individual is appropriate. So now I'm gonna to turn to Dr. Lyons. So Dr. Lyons, medications are usually the cornerstone of uh, and the beginning of any good treatment regimen for heart failure. Medications not only help people feel better, but they also significantly slow the progression of the disease and help a person with heart failure live longer. I know when we prescribe certain guideline-directed medical therapies and as doses are maximized, we often can see improvement in cardiac function and overall better quality of life for our patients. Can you review with us what medications are used in the treatment of heart failure? Sure, thank you, Stephanie. So yes, as you mentioned, we have, uh, what are considered now four classes of medications uh, that can help people with heart failure and help in, in different ways. And as I always you know, tell our patients uh, with heart failure, there's two points of focus when we look at how we're treating them. One, we want them to feel better. We want to improve their quality of life, get them back to doing the things they like to do. And the other part of that treatment is to try and improve the heart function, recover, or fix whatever was the initial insult or problem in the first place to help reduce their risk of having future symptoms or hospitalizations or other um, events as a result of their heart failure. So uh, the cornerstone, like you said, is a, is a combination of medication therapies. Uh, two of those, what we now call our pillars, are, are older medications. One is a group of medicines called beta blockers. So that's either uh, corvetolol or metoprolol, and that helps the heart to rest and preserve um, the, uh, the amount of oxygen the heart, the heart needs, it helps it to work less uh, hard and to allow recovery of the heart function. The other older class is the, what we call the mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. So that's either spironolactone or plarinone. That has a mild water pill or diuretic effect um, and also can help with recovery of the heart function. And then in the other two classes are really what's been exciting in the treatment of heart failure over the past couple of years. Um, one of those classes of medicines was made up of what we called ACE inhibitors, uh, which included lisinopril, or ramipril, or enalapril. But that has been, for the most part, replaced now by a, a new medication, um, which is a, uh, a combination of something called Secubitril and Valsartan, um, which has been shown to be superior to lisinopril in terms of improving symptoms, keeping out people out of the hospital, and actually helping them to live longer. So for most patients, that's what we're using now in that class. And then finally, the, the newest class of medications, which are the SGLT2 inhibitors. And this has been an exciting development in the past um, one to two years where they've been included now in our national guidelines. Um, it's a class of medicines that interestingly was actually originally designed to treat diabetes. And then we found that diabetics with heart failure were doing better. We then started testing it in, in uh, patients who had heart failure and not diabetes, and we're seeing some of those same outcomes. So exciting to see a, a, you know, an additional class of medicines, a fourth class, something we hadn't seen in many, many years uh, for treating heart failure, but something that's been working very well and we look forward to it continued. Yeah, I agree. And it's certainly exciting to actually see the improvement in our patients when they are actually up titrated and started on these medications and they come back, they have a repeat echocardiogram and sometimes they've actually had improvement in their cardiac function. So it's 
quite gratifying. So thank you for that review. I do know in some cases, and depending on the cause, we know surgery may be indicated. Can you discuss some of the surgical options that treat heart failure? Sure. So a lot of the, the surgical treatments or interventional treatments that we have are really more geared towards the uh, the primary cause or etiology of the heart failure. So as Laurel mentioned, you know, sometimes it's valvular disease, sometimes it's coronary disease. Um, so we certainly have at our disposal either um, surgical or less invasive ways to repair and replace the heart valves or to open up the coronary arteries um, that would allow them to then hopefully see improvement in heart function and subsequently improvement in their heart failure symptoms. Um, we also have some device therapies, um, which can help for certain patients with heart failure who are not getting completely better despite the medical therapies that we talked about. If despite getting on a good combination of those medications, they either still have symptoms or they still have a low heart function. In some cases, they're candidates for certain types of uh, pacemaker defibrillator, which can also help with improving the patient's fun uh, heart function, improving their symptoms. And then we have another a number of other more, um, not necessarily therapeutic devices, but other devices that we can use to help with monitoring our patients as well. Uh, different implantable devices that can help monitor their fluid levels and their oxygen levels and their heart rate and other things that help can guide us in their uh, in their treatment. Thank you so much for that. I mean, it's very clear there's many treatments for heart failure. Um, through appropriate management and, and lifestyle changes, individuals are able to maintain a consistent quality of life for a longer period of time. In addition, we do a lot of teaching surrounding several lifestyle modifications that can often be very helpful in the treatment of heart failure. In particular, and, and it's quite powerful, and this is something the patient has control over, is what they're eating, and specifically low-salt diet. So salt, um, reducing and watching salt consumption is necessary to prevent your heart from having to work harder. A salt acts like a sponge, and it can cause extra fluid to be retained. This puts extra strain on your heart and can provoke symptoms such as shortness of breath or swelling. So as a rule, we typically recommend that salt content be under 2,000 milligrams a day. It's important also, as Laura alluded to briefly, watching your weight, right? So weighing yourself every day, watching for fluid retention. If there's a rapid gain of two to three pounds in a day or five pounds in a week, that can be a sign that you're holding on to too much fluid too fast. So if that were to occur, you're going to want to let your medical provider know immediately as medications or diet uh, may need an adjustment. Um, compliance with follow-up uh, follow appointments and medication adherence are all also both very critical. Do not miss your scheduled appointments. There's a reason why that follow-up appointment was made. Um, and in addition, taking your prescribed medications as directed is crucial to the health of your heart. So while the doses of your medications are being fine-tuned over time, never stop taking your medication before consulting your medical team. If you have a concern about a side effect or a way a medicine is making you feel, you'll want to reach out to your medical team right away, as adjustments often can be made that are going to help you feel better. And, um, you know, not last but not least, because we, you know, have a limited amount of time to talk, and we could probably talk for an hour, but education and knowledge is power. So it's essential that the family and patient understand what heart failure is, what the symptoms are, what you should do if your symptoms change, and how your provider treats the disease. This is why you're here listening. So thank you for being here. And above all, remember you're the most important piece of the treatment puzzle. Effective, effectively treating heart failure takes a collaborative, multidisciplinary team with specialized um, experience and expertise. And we are fortunate in our area to have one of the most comprehensive award-winning heart failure programs in the country. So thank you to Dr. Lyons and nurse practitioner Laurel Kemp for being a part of today's discussion on heart failure. To the listeners, for more information about our comprehensive heart failure program, please contact the Heart Center at New Vance Health at 845-473-1188. And lastly, and in the spirit of February being Heart Month, if you're having any heart symptoms of any kind, my motto has always been, when in doubt, get checked out. It could save your life. Thank you, everyone.